What was up, Gundam Kitchen family? Coming to you with a non-Gundam video here. But there will be some Gundam application to this process. So they just came out the new Marvel Crisis game. And I couldn't help but try to candy coat an Iron Man. So I will walk you guys through the process because unfortunately I shot all the video. And then somehow I ran out of space on my phone and tried to reformat it. And pfft, all my pictures are lost. Everything. So we will just talk about how the process works. So first of all, if you don't know about these, these are the Liquid Chrome by Molito. You need to get these. They work great on Gundams and great on miniatures, especially if you want really reflective looks. So they call it liquid chrome. It almost finishes like mirror, especially if you apply it correctly. You're not going to see yourself. It's going to have this, like how it is on here. You're going to get all those shine and those kind of lines in there. Now, the key is, you know, picking the right marker for the right uh, type of job. So I use the one millimeter, which is this one, nice and thin. And these are not cheap. I actually wanted to check to see. This might be one of the most expensive liquids on earth because <laughs> this stuff is not cheap. I think in a 30 milliliter, is it milliliters? Yeah, I think the 30 milliliters is like 30 bucks of this stuff. So pretty expensive. And I have tried airbrushing this stuff and it's been pretty successful, but a uh, very expensive liquid to be airbrushing. This is the two millimeter and this is what I did most of this uh, Iron Man in so for the small crevices I did the one for the bigger the two um, because of you know being a miniature what I did was a lot of, I didn't put them all together first because I wouldn't be able to get to all the different angles under his armpits and stuff like that so I actually uh, did under his armpits um, got in real close to his neck, under his thighs, then I glued his uh, arms on and proceeded to crumb out the whole thing. And it looked pretty amazing when it was all done. So basically you had something that looked like a little piece of metal when it was all done. So, first thing was the Molito liquid chrome. Second thing was an uh, interesting discovery, thanks to Vidim, was contrast paints which are basically a fancy glaze or wash with some extra parts in there. These work really good as glazes as well if you're very careful with them. And I've been making my own glazes, thinning uh, paints with medium and stuff like that. What I've noticed with these is that they apply really well in one to two coats. And the objective of the contrast is like to quick paint your stuff. So you kind of glob it on and it'll settle on the where it settles into like crevices will be dark and then it'll like slide off of the high parts, leaving them light. But if you paint it more controlled, you can actually use it as a glaze. And it gla and it just lays down on like one to possibly two coats if you want it a little darker. So that's what we used. Wherever you see the red was this uh, Blood Angels red. And wherever you see yellow, which ended up looking like gold, is this yellow here. So, and then the only other color used in here was Vallejo's Steel. And this is from the airline, wouldn't really matter, I don't think, but this is the steel. So we have the steel here and the yellow up here, which is ends up looking a lot like gold. And then all the rest is the red. And then for your miniature painters out there, you kind of know how I did the uh, effect for the uh, chest. So I just used uh, Vallejo. I thinned it out a little bit. I left the chest with the uh, original chrome, so I did not paint that part when I applied. I applied everything with a brush. It was all brush painted and the markers right on there. Um, came in with this sky blue with some medium mix. 
hoping that the silver would still show through it. Kind of took away most of the silver, so I ended up highlighting the center of the chest with some white to make sure it popped a little bit more. And uh, then for the dark part, I just use an, an ink, like a wash in this case, to give me that nice little line to give it the darkness. And same thing on my hand. So in the very center of the hand, you have the uh, white. And same thing in the center of the chest is a white there as well to give it a little pop. Same thing happened in the eyes. Exact same mix. So now, obviously not everybody's going to be painting Marvel Crisis characters and crazy Iron Mans. But this technique has many applications. So, first off. Let's talk about Space Marines. So I had to practice this. I grabbed some little uh, easy build Space Marines I had sitting around. This is the first piece I did. Actually, I think it comes out a lot cooler on this piece because it's so flat. Iron Man has a lot of edges and angles, which cuts the ability for the shine to have straight lines. So though he looks pretty good on his backside, a lot of the front is so has so many angles, he just breaks up his own shine lines. This piece here, when it's when you catch it in the right light, you get a beam of light going all the way across. It looks really nice. So this was using the exact same process I did on the uh, Iron Man. Now, of course, most people are not going to wear their Space Marines all glittery like this because they're supposed to be grimy and dirty. But it was a pretty cool test. This one I did using the airbrush. So I used the chrome marker, chromed them all out, then came over and airbrushed. The airbrush gives it a little, makes it much more uh, opaque. So you're not getting as much of the chrome shining through, but you get a really nice metal look. So it's not quite as shiny. And here you can see what the chrome looks like by itself. This wasn't the best application, but it looks still pretty damn good. A little foggy on the blade side, but the rest of the blade is really good. So that's airbrushed. This is hand brush. Hand brush, I seem to have a little bit more control of how dark it was getting because I could actually see as I was going. While we airbrush, it's really hard to figure out when to stop. And you really won't see these pop their colors until you put those clears on. And I'll show you in a second exactly what I use for my uh, clear coats. Next example is, I said, hmm, now everybody's going to have access to the Molotov. It's kind of expensive. It's kind of hard to get. So I try to try to Vallejo's metal color, aluminum. So this is a really nice airbrushable uh, metal color. You could also do this with regular um, metal colors, but this has a really fine flake is why I prefer this one versus other metal colors from the Vallejo line. And this piece was done with that. So, as you can see, this is your metal color line right here. Pretty shiny. This is after a gloss coat on it as well. Has a nice little shine to it. On the head, it's on there too. Top part is done by brush painting the colors on. So we have the red and then the yellow. This is a very nice effect if you do not want hyper glossy look or really reflective look. Comes out much more subtle, looks like metal. So if you're going for a more subtle thing, and I think this is what a lot of you know, miniature gamers would want is more of a subtle look. This came out really nice. On the bottom here, this is airbrushed on. So it's a really nice, like, flat look. That's a good look, too. But that's not top-coated. So if you want to keep it looking like this, you probably want to use a mat or probably a sound would work better to cover it, to protect it. That's a really nice look. And what's cool about airbrushing it or doing, especially with the airbrush, if I, I focus right here underneath the knee and I'm shaded it a little darker, so it has an actual shade to it. So I intensified the color just by focusing there for a little longer with the airbrush. You could do that same technique with the paintbrush, it just might not have that smooth transition. This is airbrushed with a gloss coat on it, which came out with a very nice shine because of the gloss coat. It just like pulls the colors. Now the process I did with this was the more traditional way you would apply metallics. I gloss blacked it first. So I used Tamiya's gloss black, no primer, just went straight to me gloss black. Let that dry, hit it with the um, uh, metal colors from Vallejo in aluminum. So 
because these were all acrylics and especially the Tamiya dries really quick because it's uh, solvent based, I was able to do this back to back to back almost really quick application. Unlike the liquid chrome, which I believe is an oil, I'm not sure if it is because it doesn't have a stench to it. It actually has a pretty clean smell. But I'm pretty sure this is oil based and it takes a really long time to dry. That's the big downside of this. But it gives you that really nice, uh, hyper bright color. But drawing time is an issue, and I'm a very impatient person. So I think for the Iron Man, I let that dry probably for about eight hours, and that's with like about two passes of the heat gun and fanning it for a while. So this other piece I just did this morning, rushing through it, and it's a good example of what happens if you don't let your uh, let it dry enough. So I only hit it once with the heat gun, and it probably did this all in about 30 minutes. So it is a very nice candy metallic look, but it's not as reflective as it should be because I think when I, this is all airbrushed on, so I actually decanted the liquid chrome into the airbrush, sprayed that. And the trick with that is you need to spray it wet, meaning that you probably put like a soft coat down, just a little bit of a coat, and then come on it pretty hard, pretty quick because you don't want to be spraying on it. Other parts are starting to dry. But... It gets on there thick, so that means it has to go wait a really long time to dry. I didn't do that, and then I sprayed the uh, contrast color, and I think that started to separate into the liquid chrome, so it lost a lot of its reflectivity, but it's still a very nice look. And it has very little to no orange peel. There's a couple specks I got in there, but no orange peel, so that's a great thing. Another nice thing about the liquid chrome is on all these applications, I did not prime beforehand. I put the liquid chrome right onto the plastic. It's so thick, you don't have to really worry about backing it with black or anything. It'd probably come out a little nicer if you did, but it draw it hits so thick that you don't have to worry about um, underneath colors radiating through. So as you can see, probably on camera, that there are like some speckling from the, the paint separating together or not separating together, but combining together and then speckling. But all in all, it's still a pretty nice look, and if done right with plenty of time to dry, I think you have a very nice reflective piece. But like I said, this is a very expensive technique, and I am willing to try this on one of our Death of Gunplus. I, if you guys know, know me for a while, I have failed on a RE Nightingale trying to candy coat that for many a year, several attempts. But now this... With the chroma's out, I am not going to do it on a demo RE. I've given up on that RE. But I will try it on a, um, maybe an SD. And that's probably going to cost me about $30 of liquid chrome to make that happen. So we will try it and see if we can get a nice candy coat going on a, on a SD Nightingale. Which I think will be a pretty cool look when it's all said and done. So let's take another look. And what you can do with contrast paint, use pretty much in a candy coat technique. So, like I said, we're using kind of like a glaze or a clear, and we're making this our candy. And it does really well. And that yellow looks like gold. So, which is a really cool feat, a cool way to make some nat more natural looking golds. Because a lot of gold colors, I'm not feeling the, the, uh, the color they come out in. And there's actually two different shades of uh, yellow in the uh, contrast line. And again, I think the contrast has, what, what makes it work as a contrast paint is actually really what makes it uh, hit well in one path, one to two passes. It sticks really well to the material, doesn't get all like liquidy and runny, and it's already pre-mixed. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I got to get this mix right. So that's what's really nice. And Especially with these marker, with the uh, Molotov marker, liquid chromes, they do not like to mess with Tamiya. You put Tamiya on top of them, it starts separating, much like the one I painted too quick. So I think the key is something very, um, wa something water-based that's not going to heat up and cause any reactions. All right, so for finishing, what I did was I used Pledge Floor Care as my gloss coat, at least for my first layer of gloss. So this bottle is a hobbyist dream because it's super cheap and you get a lot. 
but you got to look out for this stuff because it always changes its case. So this is an older one. It's probably about two years old. Maybe it might be about four years now. So this is what the bottle looked like four years ago. Pledge Floor Care. It will um, have acrylic in the list of ingredients. So make sure you look out for it. You don't get like pledge for wood, not the same thing. Um, I actually mixed a little bit of Simple Green because I heard that that makes it even glossier. So Simple Green. So I usually have one bottle of regular pledge and then one that's already pre-mixed with the Simple Green. So uh, I brush painted that on to the Iron Man. Um, brush painted on to pretty much all the other examples you saw, except for this one where I wanted to dry really quick, so I airbrushed it on. So cool thing about the pledge, it runs right through the airbrush with no problem and is easily uh, cleaned up too, not like some of the other uh, top coats that are really hard to get out your airbrush. So as long as you clean it right away, not a big deal. So then the other finishing technique is after that dried, I came in and did what's called a pin wash, which I know a lot of guys in the hot and the miniature world will do washes using acrylic washes, but this is something from like a more of a scale model thing where you take a, an opposite type of medium. So I painted the kit in acrylics, but I use a enamel wash to do my uh, wash. So I use uh, Tamiya's panel line accent color in black. And what's cool about the Tamiya, usually I mix up my own washes using um, oil paints. What I like about Tamiya is it comes with this nice little applicator already in the bottle. So I'm not, not messing a brush up. Don't have to clean anything. And theirs doesn't get gritty over time when it starts settling. It seems whatever they're using in here seems to keep it separated for a very long time. So that makes it a very useful uh, tool. Um, and then a lot of people will go right to um, enamel thinners to uh, clean this up. What I have found, and you know, it's pretty easy to research, is that lighter fluid, and you can get cheap lighter fluid like Ron saw, you don't have to get Zippo. But lighter fluid isn't as hot as uh, normal thinner for um, enamels. So it's easy to clean up and um, not eat through other layers of paint, especially if, not they're, if they're not fully cured. So in essence, especially if your paint's fully cured, you should be able to go right over your acrylics with the enamel and they shouldn't interact. And even when you use lighter fluid, it shouldn't interact. But... I rushed a little bit, so I had to be a little careful. I use very fine Q-tips, uh, like hobby Q-tips. So Tamiya makes them. I use uh, Mr. Hobbies, um, and they come out like this. So they're very fine, very tight. These uh, won't put little strands of cotton all over the place. And I use that to do the cleanup, and you can be very precise. So I use a nice little applicator, get it right where I want. I'm not coating the whole kit. I just apply it where I want it, and then I clean it up with the um, bronze saw, and that was how I did most, 99% of it. And then just for a couple of areas where there were no actual panel lines, I came back in with a Gundam marker, and it actually worked okay on the gloss and tried to get around like the edge of the uh, mask of the gold to the red on the head, see if I could draw a line in there a little better because some spots did not actually have race parts there. So that's how we applied our panel lines using a pin wash. And, you know, with a little more time, you get as accurate as you want, you get as crazy as you want. Um, though I got to say, all your layers of paint start filling up some of these, um, the panel lines. So you got to make sure you're applying your paint, you know, sparingly and not super thick because you don't want it to cover up stuff. So when you do your washes... They actually have somewhere to sit. To me, a panel accent is a great product. Doesn't get greedy over time. Stays nice and fluid. And then any kind of lighter fluid should work. Maybe the cheaper the better because it's probably not as many chemicals in there because they cheapen out. And then, you know, as I said, I like to use Pledge Floor Care, but you can use any water-based top coat. It would probably be good for your first layer. And then to finish it all off, I came in with a... Uh, to me is clear, which is basically a clear gloss. Um, if you want to tone it down, you go with a satin. 
or you know any company's hobby grade because again you use like um something you get from walmart you're going to be spraying a lot of paint at once because those are meant to spray much larger surfaces than little models so you'll be throwing down a lot of paint and probably losing a lot of detail in that thick coat so that's why you kind of want to go with hobby grade All right, that's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully we will see this application used on some Gundams in the near future. And I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible. I was hoping to get it out on Friday so that anybody working on their Marvel Crisis can have some ideas. This technique would also work really well in Captain America's shield because I think in the movies, the shield isn't white, red, and blue. It's actually whatever metal, vibramium red and blue so your chrome could actually be your vibranium color so all right have fun out there get building and try some new stuff peace